Praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, and peace to the sons and daughters of Jacob and the daughter. I'm sorry, but I'll just, let me just do that again. Praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining us on this program. Now, this is the second part of our first part of our two-part lesson, which is protocol, God's order concerning us. Now, when we left off in part one, we had left off with, the, uh, with Paul saying, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself as a glorious church, trying to clean us all up, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their bi own bodies. So he's giving us an example. As their own bodies, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. So we're going to continue with this lesson. And we will start it back in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we will pick it up at verse 3. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Three. And what we have to understand in a lesson like this, brothers and sisters, is that God actually does have an order, an order of authority, an order of how he wants us to conduct ourselves. Okay, Whether it be in society or whether it be in our own homes or whether it be in church, he has a way that we should conduct ourselves, how we treat one another in all ways, in decency and in order. So let's look at this, dealing with, the, with, with our marriage, dealing with our relationships. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. But I would have you know mm -hmm. that the head of every man is Christ. Yes. And the head of the woman is the man. Yes. And the head of Christ is God. Okay, so we had that. Go to verse 4, brother. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered, yes. dishonoreth his head. Yes, yeah, so, men, when you are praying or you're prophesying or we're reading this scripture, do not have your head covered. So why do we do these things? Well, we do it because we just follow scripture. That's what it means to be a Bible Christian, even though we go more by Israelites. But that's what it means. That means you are following the Bible. So he said, but for every man praying or prophesying, if I'm reading with this, thus says the Lord... I'm prophesying. So, every man praying. So, when you're at home and you're praying, take your hat off, gentlemen. Okay? A prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, uh -huh. dishonoreth her head. And he's going to say exactly why. But women... When you do it, it's the opposite. You pray or you prophesy. You're reading this, this word. You're reading this Bible. Or you're saying what thus says the Lord. Or if you're just simply praying, cover your head. There's a reason for that. Now, if you do it uncovered, you dishonor your head. Go ahead. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Yeah, it's like if she were shaven. Go ahead. For if the woman be not covered. Uh-huh. Let her also be shorn. Yeah, let her, if she's not going to be covered, she might as well shave her head. Because if that's a shame, then she, she, may, she may as well just do that. Go ahead. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, uh -huh. let her be covered. Yeah, so if it's a shame for her to be shaven or shorn, let her be covered. So, basically, cover your head when you pray or you prophesy. Women, cover your head. Guys, uncover your head. Okay? He's going to even say why. Go ahead, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Yep. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Yes, for as much he is the image and glory of God. But? But the women is the glory of the man. Exactly. This is protocol. This is order. Today we take that simply. But the God are looking, he are looking for those people who are obedient. What did we, in, in our first lesson we read were, you know, the wrath of God is on the children of obedience. So if the Lord says, men, uncover your head, women, cover your head, are you going to obey? Okay. So he said, for the man in thee are not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. Okay. Go ahead. 
For the man is not of the woman, uh -huh. but the woman of the man. Plain and simple. Did Adam come from Eve or did Eve come out of the side of Adam? Amen. Okay. Now, uh, verse 9, brother. Neither was the man created for the woman. Yes. But the woman for the man. Understand that. Now, go ahead. Now, here's a reason why women should have their head covered. Go ahead. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Yeah, you're telling the angels that, oh, no, 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 I'm in line. I'm falling under protocol. I have a, a husband. What did Eve do? She went out and started talking to Satan herself. Didn't consult with her husband. She just did it on her own. No covering. She came from under her covering. So, We've read multiple times that women, the husband is your head. That is your covering. Okay? We can read in other places where if a woman makes a, a vows a vow and her husband hears it. Because God says when you make a vow, you got to keep it. Even if it's a foolish vow, you have to keep it. But we can read where if a woman makes a, a vow and it's foolish and her husband hear, hears it, he can disannul that vow because God gave him that authority to do that. And if you don't want to be constantly attacked and deceived by a demon or an angel, women, cover your head. Show the angels that you are under the protocol that God sets and they have to move. Okay? Alright, let's read 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter and 3. 1 Peter and 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 1, where we left off. He said, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Give them that signal. Let the angels know. Let them know you have a covering. You have a head. Okay? 1 Peter 3. Let's go to 1 Peter 3 and pick it up at verse 1. 1 Peter 3. Verse 1, and let the Bible speak. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Yes. That, if any obey not the word, mm -hmm. they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Yes. So, if, so wives, he's giving you some help here. Okay? He said, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. That if any obey not the word, so if your husband doesn't obey the word, Okay? Here's one of the things you should be doing. If he's not obeying the word, they must also, made without the word, be won by your conversation of the wise, of your lifestyle. So, for instance, you have a husband, he's not really obeying the word, and saying and doing what thus says the Lord. You keep following the Lord. You keep doing what the Lord says. You keep doing your, your head covering. You keep the dietary law. You stay away from idolatry. You keep following it, and your husband is going to be watching that. That he may be won by your conversation and in this instance, lifestyle. Not because you're standing up and you're trying to lord over him. And no, you're just going to follow the Lord. You're going to trust the Lord. You're going to pray for him. You're going to keep your head covered. You're going to do everything what thus says the Lord. So he can see that in plain view. And maybe, just maybe, he may be won by your lifestyle. Go ahead. While they behold your chat's conversation. What did he just say? Go ahead. Coupled with fear. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So while your husband is seeing you really doing it and God has started to work in your life and move in your life and bless you. And just change your countenance. And your husband is watching that. And he's like, wait a minute. Oh, oh, hold on a minute. There is something different about my wife because she's following the Lord. She's doing all this stuff. And there's a certain peace, one that may pass all understanding. And I don't have that same peace. What are we doing different? Well, if she's following the Lord, I'm not. So maybe I need to change some things that I'm doing. This is how you can do that. Because he may think, well, whoa, if, if the Lord is with her and not with me, and then fear can set in. That's how you can win your husband back to the Lord, women. Now go ahead, verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plating the hair, uh -huh. of wearing of gold, uh -huh. or putting on of apparel. Yes, so all these name, brand, and fancy.
fancy labels and all that stuff, not important, okay? Just not important. Go ahead. But let it be hidden man of the heart. Yes. And that which is not corruptible. Yes. Even the ornament of the meek and the quiet spirit. That's what God wants you to have. Go ahead. Which is in the sight of God a great price. That is a great sight. That is a great price in the sight of God if you can do that. If you can have a meek and humble spirit. See, what we keep forgetting is that God is not so much concerned about what you are without. Mm -hmm. He is more concerned of what you are within. Mm -hmm. This is what he's looking for. He just said all the, the gold and the fancy apparel and all that, not important. But what he said, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. He loves that meek and humble spirit. He said we have to come to God like little children. Innocently. You don't know everything. You don't have your chest all puffed out or anything. No. Meek and humble spirit. Okay, verse 5. For after this manner, in the old time, uh -huh. the holy woman also... Uh -huh. Who trusted in God yep. adorned themselves. Yes. Being in subjection unto their own husband. He's talking to the women. He's trying to give, he's trying to give you something. So all of you, all the single ladies, all the independent, and all the all the women and all that stuff. And women's liberation, and I know this sounds like this is uh, uh, oppressing you, then you gotta take that up with the Lord. He's trying to get you right back in line. Because these types of things are of great price to him. This is what thus says the Lord, not some man. This is not about being chauvinistic. This is about getting everything in order. Because would you not agree that most things are out of order right now? It's chaotic. It's crazy. So let's get this thing back in order. He's talking to women right now. Okay, so he said, for after this manner, in the old time, there's, see, there's not many old-fashioned women, and the girls today are not raised with those old-fashioned values. They're not raised like that today. Also, who trusted in God, they trusted in God, he named that verse, adorned themselves in modest apparel, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Keep going, brother. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Yep. Calling him Lord. Not as in God, but that's what we mean. You know, like master, he's the head. Go ahead. Whose daughters he are. Yes. As long as he do well. Yes. And are not afraid with any amazement. Yeah, you are daughters of Sarah. Women. Wear that proudly. She called, she called Abraham Lord. Just, he's the head. He wasn't Lord as in a deity. Okay? But she called him Lord. Just listen to what he had to say. Obey him and, and, and dress modestly and serve the Lord. And the Bible speaks fondly about her. Do you want God to speak fondly about you? Then follow the example that is set forth for you. Let's go. Likewise, mm -hmm. the husband. Yes. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Yes. Now we're talking to the men. Go ahead. Giving honor unto the wife. Honor your wives. Do not be in public. Do not embarrass your wife. Do not judge her and berate her in front of people or anything like that. You don't do that. Honor your wife. You put her on a pedestal in public. And I don't mean dote on her all day. They make the subject of con a conversation about your wife. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you don't say negative things about your wife. Give her honor. Treat her like you would want other people to treat her. You don't want some guy to disrespect her, call her names, or put their hands on her. You do the same thing. It's real simple. Okay? Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Go ahead, brother. As unto the weaker vessel. Yes. As being heirs together of the grace of life. Yes. That your prayers be not hindered. Husbands, you have got to pick this up. You've got to get this, brothers. Brothers, you've got to get this. I'm telling you right now. If your aunt, if your prayers are not being answered, you better pay attention to this verse right here. Okay, you better.
better try your best to get in harmony with your wife as being heirs together of the grace of life. I want me and my wife to get into the kingdom. So let so we want to get a little bit of harmony going on here. Okay? We have some harmony. I can't just be constantly mad at my wife or whatever, uh, my wife, because my prayers would be hindered. God's not hearing me. You know why he's not hearing me? Because he's saying you better go patch these things up first before you come talk to me. <laughs> you better go fix these things up before you come talk to me. Lord, why aren't you listening to me? Go deal with these things with your wife. So that your prayers are not hindered. Finally, verse 8, brother. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Yes. Having compassion one of another. That's both people. We're talking about husband and wife. Be of one mind. Having compassion one of another. Go ahead. Love as brethren. Yes. Be pitiful. Having pity. My wife says I'm pitiful, but I don't know if it meant having pity. But go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> be courteous. Okay, be courteous. Number nine. Not rendering evil for evil. No, no evil. Don't pay back evil for evil. Go ahead. Or railing for railing. They get loud and get all in go crazy and just start get putting your business all out in the streets and all that. Don't repay that. Okay, not railing for railing. Go ahead. But contrise uh -huh. blessing. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you are there unto call, yes. that you should inherit a blessing. And you want to inherit a blessing. Let's go to Luke 6. Let's go to Luke 6. Luke 6, and we're going to go to verse 27. We're going to go to Luke 6 and verse 27. Luke 6 and verse 27. Seven, And when we get there, brother, let the Bible speak. But I say unto you, which here? Yes. Love your enemy. Yes. Do good to them which hate you. Now, this is for all of us. This is men, women. This is us for being, you know, the sons of Jacob and the daughters of Zion. This is how we have to be in society. Okay? This is how we... This, you have to understand, when he come back and he resurrects us and he, he wants to make us kings and priests and marches into the kingdom and things like that, you got to understand, he's preparing us. This is the proving ground. We have to start getting this right, right here, right now. We're getting the practice in right now. This is the dress rehearsal. It's live right now for the next life. And so that's why they tell us things. It may seem hard, but you got to work on them. Because it'll be real important in the next life. Because if you're going to be king and priest and rule with Christ, you got to know something. And it's got to be in you. So when you rule over those who don't know better, he only wants people in leadership who knows better and who's doing it. Okay? Go ahead, brother. But I say unto you, which is? Yes. Love your enemy. Go ahead. Do good to them which hate you. Yes. Bless them that curse you. Yes. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Boy, that's going to be hard. That's going to be hard. Despitefully use you? Despitefully use you? How about, how about your relationship with someone and they've been plotting and planning to leave you a long time. But they just bide their time so that you can continue to take care of them and pay their bills and all that. That's despitefully using you. Despitefully using you. Still got to love them. Don't have that hate in your heart. The Lord will take care of all that. Don't worry. He will take care of all that. Don't have hate in your heart. He asks us to do hard things. But once we get that down into our spirit, once we get an understanding, then you'll be fit to lead with Him. Go ahead, brother. And unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, yep. offer also the other. Yes. And him that taketh away thy cloak, uh -huh. forbid not to take thy coat also. Oh, that is, you know, that is, you know, what that would look like today. If someone rob you, they want to take your wallet, you give them your wallet or whatever, and then you just, you give them your gloves or something, give them your jacket or something like that. It's just, you don't despitefully, I know it's hard, but we're just reading what is written here. And I know we have to get this in our spirit. We have to understand it and get it. And sometimes it may actually happen. Something like that may actually happen. 
But even if it doesn't, you still have to get it up here. This is how we, this is how we have to think sometimes. Now, does that mean being a saint of the Most High, does that mean you're always going to be just meek and you're just going to let people walk over you and just and, and kick you around? No, it doesn't mean that. Okay? And Ecclesiastes says that to everything there's a season. So sometimes it's time to strike back. But you have to have the wisdom to know when that is. Let's go, brothers. Give to every man that asketh of thee. Yes. And of him that taketh away thy goods, mm -hmm. ask them not again. Go ahead. And as he would that men should do to you. Yes. Do ye also to them likewise. Yeah, that's like you do unto others as you would have them do unto you, basically. Go ahead. For if ye love them which love you. Uh-huh. What thank have ye? What's the big deal if you love someone who loves you back? What's so hard about that? What makes you different than that? Oh, I love you. They love you back. Okay, yeah, that's good, but you don't get, you don't get a prize for that. Okay? That's the easy part. The Lord tells us do something harder than that. Go ahead. For sinners also love those that love them. There you go. Even sinners love them. Love them. Sinners love other sinners. The Lord doesn't play with this. He's trying to build up real saints. Real saints. Sanctified people. Why he call you a peculiar people? That's pretty peculiar right there. That's pretty peculiar. They do me wrong, Lord. I'm still going to love them. That's pretty peculiar, don't you think? Amen. Go ahead. And if ye do good to them, which do good to you, uh -huh. what thank have ye? What? What's the big deal? You do good to them, but those who do the good to you. What's the big deal? Go ahead. For sinners also do even the same. They do the same. <laughs> they, they, they do the same. I mean, even robbers, even two robbers are going to now. You know that's wrong. They go rob. They'll go rob, and they'll go back to their little hideout, and they can split the money. Even sinners do that. They come to courtesy to each other. We got to do more. We got to go to that next step, that next level. We all have to work on that. Go ahead. And if he lend to them of whom he hoped to receive, uh -huh. what thank have ye? Go ahead. For sinners also lend to sinners. Yes, they do. To receive as much again. Yeah, so when you lend to people and you're looking for them to pay you back, I always say, I told my sister one time, um, someone wanted to borrow money, and she didn't know if she should do it. I just said, look, you know what? When you lend money, lend it with the mind of that you may not give it back. And if that price is too high, if you say, well, if I give this person, you put, I don't know what's too high for you, but you say, I give this person a thousand dollars, it will bother me if I don't get it back, then don't lend it. But if you're more comfortable with 200 bucks, now you do want it back, but if you don't get it back, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't bother you. So you don't, I mean, if, if, if a thousand bucks is too comfortable, it's uncomfortable for you, and it'll, you know, it, you don't get to pay your rent or something like that, okay, then you can't, you can't do it if you don't get it back. But give what you're comfortable without getting back. That's what we have to understand. Go ahead. But love your enemies. Yes. And do good. Uh huh. And lend. Mm -hmm. Hoping for nothing again. Hoping that hey, you don't 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 look for it coming back to you. You do all these things. Love your enemies, not not expecting them to love you back. You do good, not expecting that good will come back to you. You lend, not expecting that that money will come in, that money will come back to you. And lend, hoping for nothing again. Go ahead. And your reward shall be great. Yes. And ye shall be the children of the highest. That's, isn't that what you want? Isn't that what we all want, right? We want our reward to be great, and we want to be children of the most highest. Go ahead. For he is kind unto the thankful. Yes. And to the evil. So, I want you to consider this, brothers and sisters. So, if you do these things, see, this is part of your good works. When people say you don't have to do anything, this is part of it. This is part of your good works. So, when you lend and you help and you do and you don't get paid back, but guess what? If the Lord pays you back, isn't that a better payback? Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Consider that, brothers and sisters. Okay? Because he said... He said, Beloved ye your neighbors, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be children of the highest. Okay? For he is kind unto the unthankful. 
into the evil. Go ahead, 36. Be ye therefore merciful. Yes. As your Father also is merciful. Isn't he mer merciful? He is merciful. We've all done wrong. I'm not asking for a confession or anything like that. But think of some of the worst things you've ever done. And he's merciful to forgive you for that. So he is indeed merciful. So he expects you to be merciful. He's training you to be like him. Go ahead, brother. Judge not, uh -huh. and ye shall not be judged. Go ahead. Condemn not, mm -hmm. and ye shall not be condemned. Uh -huh. Forgive. And ye shall be forgiven. That's how it works, brothers and sisters. And I know that is hard. Hmm. Now, let's not get the judge not. Uh, ye shall not be judged. Don't get that twisted. Because we know we're supposed to reprove and rebuke one another. If someone's stepping sideways and someone's doing something. But don't condemn someone to hell. You and I don't have the keys to the lake of fire. So we can put someone in, whoever we choose to put, them, put in. We don't have that power. So don't condemn someone to hell. But you can win your brother. If they're doing something wrong, you can say something. That's not judging them. That's what people, that's what people get where they get this scripture twisted. Oh, don't judge me. Doesn't does, does your book say, judge not lest you be judged? So that means you can't call sin, sin is what they're basically saying. I'm doing wrong and you can't call me on a carpet. That part's not true. But do not condemn someone because they can turn around if they choose to turn around. So don't condemn someone to hell. You don't know when they may turn around, if they turn around. Okay? Verse 38, brother. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Yes. Good measure, mm -hmm. pressed down, and shaken together. Yes. And running over, mm -hmm. shall men give unto your bosom. Blessings will come to you. Go ahead. For the same measure... That ye meet uh -huh. with all, it shall be measured to you again. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same principle of reaping and sowing. Same principle. The same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Let's go to 1 Peter and 3. Let's go to 1 Peter and 3, or let's go back to 1 Peter and 3. 1 Peter 3. This is the Lord's protocol, how we should be conducting ourselves. This is God's order concerning us. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter 3. And we'll pick it up at verse 10. 1 Peter 3 and verse 10. And when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. 1 Peter 3 and verse 10. For he that will love life yes. and see good days, uh -huh. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Yes. And his lips that they speak no ill. Yes. So he said, for he that love life and see good days, if you want to have at least some semblance of a good life and have good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. So don't, let's not speak evil. Okay? Let's not do that. And his lips that they speak no guile, no sneaky, conniving, underhanded stuff, etc. Okay, continue, brother. Let him eschew evil. Go ahead. Let him eschew evil uh -huh. and do good. Let him flee from evil and do good. Go ahead. Let him seek peace uh -huh. and eschew it. Hey, okay, go ahead, brother. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. He's watching the righteous. Those who are trying to do good, the eyes of the Lord are upon them. Go ahead. And his ears are open unto their prayers. Is that not what you want, brothers and sisters? You want the Lord to hear your prayers. Go ahead. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. There you go. So, when people say you don't have to do anything or that's all it takes, he's giving us instructions concerning us. He's telling us how to behave ourselves. Go ahead, brother. And who is he that will harm you? Uh-huh. If ye be followers of that which is good. Go ahead, brother. But if ye suffer for righteousness sake, yes. happy are ye. So, if, so he's saying you can have a good life, you can have good days and all that. Just do good. Try Seek after righteousness. Seek after peace. That type of thing. And who's going to do you any harm? But if someone does do you harm for righteousness sake, be happy. If you know that tribulation is coming upon you because you are trying to serve God. And guess what? That would be painfully obvious in the near future. Be happy. Because you know what your reward is. Okay? Be happy are ye. Go ahead. And be not afraid of their terror. Yes. 
neither be troubled. Keep going, brother. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Yes. And be ready always mm -hmm. to give an answer to every man yep. that asketh you a reason uh -huh. of the hope that is in you with the meekness and fear. So when they ask you, how come you don't eat pork? Have an answer. How come you don't do the holidays? What's going on? Have an answer. Why don't you do uh, why don't you do Easter? Have an answer. He said, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you. Have an answer. You know why you're doing what you're doing. You know why you're walking with the Lord. Okay? Verse 16. Having a good conscience. Yes. That whereas they speak evil of you. They will speak evil of you because you're trying to walk with the Lord. Go ahead. As of evildoers, uh -huh. they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation with Christ. Yeah, and uh, again, that conversation is their lifestyle. Okay? They're going to speak bad about you. You're crazy. You're in a cult. You're trying to follow God. It doesn't really mean that. <laughs> it doesn't take all that. Why are you covering your head? Why are you doing that? You can you can eat pork. What are you talking about? Sprinkle some Jesus on it. It's okay. He did it for us. They're going to speak evil of you, brothers and sisters. That's what they're going to do because you're trying to walk with God. He said having a good conscience. So you, you have a good conscience. You have a good conscience. That whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers. That's what evildoers do. That's what they do. They may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Go ahead, brother. For it is better uh -huh. if the will of God be so uh -huh. that ye suffer for well-doing. Yeah, so go ahead and suffer for well-doing. It doesn't matter what man does to you. They may persecute you and they may talk about you and they may mock you and all that. That's okay. Okay? He said that the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing than what? Than for evil doing. Yes. Go ahead. For Christ also hath once suffered for his sin. Yes. The just for the unjust yes. that he might bring us to God. Yes. Being put to death in the flesh uh -huh. but quickened by the Spirit. He made us alive by the Spirit. Okay, let's go over to Colossians 3. Let's go look at Colossians 3. Okay? Now again, he's telling, he's talking to us, we were talking about marriage, we were talking in the first lesson about how to do it in the, uh, how we conduct ourselves in the church. We've been talking about husband and wives. We've been talking about how we conduct ourselves in society. This is the protocol of the Lord. This is what it means to be a Christ follower. He said it, you do it, you're a Christ follower. That's how that works. You don't make excuses. You don't try to find ways around it. You don't try to look for loopholes. You just see what thus says the Lord. Now, he's still dealing with us, so we're going to look a little bit more with uh, how we conduct ourselves as a family. Go ahead, Colossians 3. Colossians 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Colossians 3 and verse 18. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Does the Lord like that? Go ahead. As it is fit in the Lord. He likes that. Okay. So go ahead. Husband, uh -huh. love your wife uh -huh. and be not bitter against them. Listen up, fellas. Don't be bitter against them. Patch it up. Fix it. Make it right. Go ahead. Children. Children. Obey your parents in all things. Children, obey your parents in all things. Go ahead, one more time. Read that again. Children. Children. Obey your parents in all things. Go ahead. And why? Let's see if that's any good. Go ahead. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Because the Lord is pleased with that, children. Obey your parents. That's it. Because for you, children, the promise is assured for you. So obey your parents. Obey your parents. Your parents, that's your covering. Okay? Go ahead, 21. Fathers, uh -huh. provoke not your children to anger. Okay, go ahead. Lest they be discouraged. Yeah, don't discourage. Don't provoke them to anger and they'll be discouraged. They'll be discouraged in all things. 
And if you beat them over the head with the wrong thing, they can walk away from that covering. They can walk away from the Lord. They can walk, for instance, you're in the Bible. You're reading the Bible. You're trying to live holy. You're trying to do the right thing. But yet, you're beating up their mom. And yet you're holding the Bible at the same time and you're slapping around mom. And you're pulling her hair and you're dragging her outside and all this other stuff. You can hold that Bible all you want. You go to your kid and you provoke them to anger. And then they'll walk away from that Bible. Because you're not setting that example. I know these are stinging and scathing remarks, but sometimes we need to hear these things to be to put ourselves back in check. We have to understand that. You don't want to discourage them. I know it's a little extreme, but we do know it happens. We do know it happens. And also let me say on a side note, women out there, listen. If you know you have a guy who you know he just would not put his hands on you, don't take advantage of that and provoke him. And think that you have a right to grab something and hit him and beat him and all that stuff just because he won't hit you back, that type of thing. Don't treat each other like that. Horrible example for the kids. And God doesn't like any of it. Let's go. Go ahead. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Yes. Not with... I serve it yes. as men pleasers, mm -hmm. but in singleness of heart, okay. fearing God. Go ahead. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, uh -huh. as the Lord, and not unto men. Yes. Knowing that the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, yes. for ye serve the Lord Christ. That's why you're doing all this. That's why, women, you're submitting to your husband, because you want to receive the inheritance. Husbands, that's why you're loving your wives, because you want to receive the inheritance. Children, that's why you're obeying your parents because you want to receive the inheritance. We're not doing all this for nothing. There's a reward at the end of it and there's nothing wrong with having a goal. I'm doing all this. I'm serving the Lord because I want to be in His family when He comes back. Nothing wrong with that. Because you want to receive the reward. If there was something wrong with chasing after that reward, He wouldn't offer a reward. Okay? So the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. 25, brother. But he that doeth wrong uh -huh. shall receive the wrong which he hath done. Uh -huh. And there is no respect of person. So it doesn't matter who you are. Okay? You do wrong, you're going to receive wrong according to your doings. According to your works, you will receive wrong. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ephesians 6 and verse 1. Dealing with more family. Dealing with more family. Ephesians 6 verse 1. We get there, brother. Let the Bible speak. Children, uh -huh. obey your parents in the Lord. Yes. For this is right. He said it again. Keep going. Honor thy father and mother. Yes. Which is the first commandment with promise. With promise. Children, you may have parents, you get to the kingdom. You have long days on this earth and you get to the kingdom. Okay? It has promise with it as we read uh, in the last piece of scripture that we uh, went over. Go ahead, brother. That it may be well with thee. Yes. And thou mayest live long on the earth. Yes. Go ahead. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, uh -huh. but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Yeah, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's what fathers need to be doing. Bring your children up in the nurture and the admonition. Teach them what thus says the Lord. Teach them that. Go ahead, brother. Servants, mm -hmm. be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. Yes. With fear and trembling yes. and singleness of your heart. As unto Christ. I know sometimes we have difficult bosses and stuff like that. I know, I, I understand that, but we have to do our work according to the Lord as if we're serving the Lord. Because we're submitting ourselves to authority. That's what we have to do. Go ahead, brother. Not with eye service mm -hmm. as men pleasers, yep. but as the servants of Christ. Yes. Doing the will of God 
from the heart. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Until another job comes around, you do your job. And not just for show. Not just for men. Not for eye service. That means you're just trying to look good. You're just trying to look busy. Just trying to look busy. No, do your job. Do your job. If you don't like the job, when you're off, look for another job. But while you're there, do your job. Go ahead. Not with eye service mm -hmm. and men pleasers, mm -hmm. but as servants of Christ. Yes. Doing the will of God yes. from the heart. Go ahead. With good will doing service. Yes. As to the Lord uh -huh. and not to men. You do it like you're doing it to the Lord. Do it like you're working for the Lord and not to men. Go ahead. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, yes. the same shall he receive of the Lord. Yes. Whether he be bond or free. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. And he masters. Do the same things unto them. Uh -huh. For bearing threatening. Okay, now you masters, you have employers underneath you, you have people, you have servants and stuff. You need to treat them well too. For bearing threatening. Don't just threaten them. I'm not saying if someone's not doing their job, you can't correct them and you you know if you need to, you gotta let them go. No, no, that's fine. Just don't threaten them with the job every five minutes. Do this or you're fired. Do this or you're written up. Do this or you gotta let you go. Do do this. I'll uh, uh, cut your hours. You can't, that's not managing. That's not leading them. Okay? Now, you can put that on the table. You can say, look, I need to get this done because, I mean, if you can't do it, I'll have to find someone else to do it. I'm paying you to do it. I really need this job done. That's okay. That's fine. But every 10 minutes threatening them with their job? No, forget that. Forbearing threats. Go ahead. Knowing that your master also is in heaven. Yes. Neither is there respect of persons with him. Doesn't matter who you are. Let's go to 1 Peter 2. Let's go to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2. And we'll pick it up at verse 13. And as always, let me encourage you. Grab a piece of paper, pen, jot these scriptures down. Follow along with us if we're going a little too fast for you. 1 Peter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 13. And when we get there, we will let the Bible speak. 1 Peter 2, verse 13. Go ahead. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Mm -hmm. For the Lord's sake. Yes. Whether it be to the king. Yes. As supreme. Yes. Or unto governors. Uh -huh. As unto them that are sent by him mm -hmm. for punishment of evildoers. Yes. And for the praise of them that do well. Yes, it's, that's the reason why. See... God sets the order. Because you're going to have some people out there or some that will be called or be considered religious nuts or something where they're just like, okay, they just want anarchy. Overthrow the government. Don't listen to the man and all those other things. God says submit yourself, okay? So if you're in a country where you got to pay taxes, hey, you got to pay taxes. You're in a country where you have to obey traffic laws, okay, well, you got to obey traffic laws. That's just how it goes. That's a society that you're living in. You have to obey man, and you have to obey his ordinances, unless it makes you go against the Lord. Because Peter said that we must obey God rather than man. So if it causes you to upset God or upset man, then upset man. But if it does not cause you to violate what thus says the Lord, then you listen to the man's and submit yourself to man's ordinances. And I hope I said that clear. You obey man and his ordinances unless it causes you to disobey God. Then if you do not disobey God. Let's continue. For so is the will of God. Yes. That with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Uh huh. As free. And not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Yeah, don't, don't, don't just act like you're serving God. Really serve God. Go ahead. But as the servants of God. 17. Honor all men. Mm -hmm. Love the brotherhood. Yes. Fear God. Uh -huh. Honor the king. He just told you everything we need to do. Go ahead, brother. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Uh -huh. Not only to the good and the gentle, yes. but also to the forward. Forward. Let's keep someone hard to please. Someone that's hard. You, you, you 
can hardly stand to put up with them. But go ahead, someone uh, hard to please person. Go ahead, difficult person. Go ahead. For this is thankworthy. Uh huh. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief. Yes. Suffering wrongfully. Yes. For what glory is it mm -hmm. if when ye be buffeted for your fault? Yes. Ye shall take it uh, patiently. You shall take it patiently. Go ahead. But if when ye do well uh -huh. and suffer for it, yep. ye take it patiently, uh -huh. this is acceptable with God. Exactly. What did he say? He said, but if you, when you do well and suffer for it, take it patiently. This is acceptable to God. You're doing good. So let me let me encourage you, brothers and sisters. You say, hey, well, I'm, I'm trying to go God's way. I'm trying to walk. I'm trying to do what he wants me to do. And all these bad things are happening to me. Or people are coming against me. Or people are talking about me. Or whatever. He says, if you suffer for it and you take it patiently, this is acceptable to God. Because guess what? In the end, he's going to fix all of this. There will be no injustice when he comes back or when he's done cleaning house. You don't have to worry about all that. You will be rewarded. Let me encourage you in this. We should be encouraging one another because sometimes I know we grow weary. But the Bible says not to grow weary in doing good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Keep going. For even here unto where, uh, where he called, yes. because Christ also suffered for us, mm -hmm. leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Yes, let's go on over to Romans 13, brothers and sisters. Join me over in Romans 13. This is the protocol. This is God's order concerning us. Romans 13. And let's pick it up at verse 1. Romans 13. And pick it up at verse 1. And when you get there, brother, go ahead and read let every soul be subject unto the higher power. You heard that? Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. Go ahead. For there is no power but of God. Yes. The powers that be are ordained of God. Yes. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, uh -huh. resisteth the ordinance of God. Okay. That they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Yeah, so whosoever, whosoever, now he's got to understand, he said the powers that are ordained of God, these powers, so these governments and everything, um, as corrupt and as bad as they may be or whatever, we still have to obey the law. We still have to go by the, 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 the way, the, the rules of the government, unless it has you violate God's law. But other than that, you got to do what your custom of your society that you happen to be in. We happen to be in America, so we have to follow the American rules. Okay? It's not about an uprising. The Lord, the Lord will come and straighten all that out. Okay? Go ahead, brother. For rulers are not a terror to good work. Yes. But to evil. Go ahead. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Go ahead. Do that which is good, mm -hmm. and thou shalt have praise of the same. Yes. For he is a minister of God mm -hmm. to thee for good. Go ahead. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Yes. For he beareth not a sword in vain. Uh -huh. For he is a minister of God. Yes. A revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, uh -huh. not only for wrath, mm -hmm. but also for conscience sake. Yes, we need to be subject. Go ahead. For this cause pay ye tribute also. Yes. For they are God's ministers uh -huh. attending continually upon this very thing. Yes, they are. Verse 7. Render therefore to all their due. Yep. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Yes. Custom to whom custom. Uh -huh. Fear to whom fear. Uh -huh. Honor to whom honor. Let's go over to Matthew 22. We're going to look at this thing where he's talking about tribute to where tribute is due. Okay? Custom to where custom is due. Because I know a lot of people, they want to tear away from society and things like that. And say, okay, well, we don't want to do this and try to usurp all authority. But he said to pay your dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Thank you. Tribute to the tribute due and custom to whom custom fear to whom fear. Matthew 22 and 15. Let's take a look at this and let's wrap this up. Matthew 22 and 15. 22 and 15. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Then went the Pharisees uh -huh. and took counsel on how they might entangle him yes. in his talk. They were trying to trick Christ. Go ahead. And they sent out unto him their disciples yes. with the Herodians, mm -hmm. saying, Master, we know that thou art true, uh -huh. and teaches the way of God in truth. Go ahead. Neither carest thou for any man, uh -huh. for thou regardest not the person of men. Yes. Tell us therefore, 
What thinkest thou? Okay. Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Okay, so they just went to Christ and they're just trying to trip him up. They wanted to butter him up a little bit. Say, hey, we know you're a man of God and you teach us the way of God and truth and all that stuff. So they wanted to ask him a question. Tell us, therefore, because this is in Roman occupation. Tell us, therefore, what do you think about this? Is it lawful to pay taxes unto Caesar or not? What did he say? Go ahead. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. He knew that they were just trying to trick him up. Go ahead. And said, no. why tempt ye me, uh -huh. ye hypocrites? Why are you trying to tempt me, you hypocrites? Go ahead. Show me the tribute money. Okay, go ahead. And they brought unto him a penny. Uh -huh. And he said to them, mm -hmm. whose is this image and uh, subscription? Yeah, so he said, so sh show me the money. Let me see. Okay, who's this image and subscription? Uh, go ahead. They say unto him, Caesar's. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto them, yep. Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's. Yes. And unto God the things that are God's. Yeah. <laughs> so, why are, you, why are you trying to trip him up? Going over to Matthew 17, we're going to go back a little bit. But he just said, you know, render unto Caesar what's Caesar's. Give him what's his. If he wants that in taxes, give him what's his. And then you give what God, what belongs to God. Real simple. And then what they do? When we go to, we're gonna to go to set, uh, Matthew 17 in a minute. What, what did they do after that? Verse 22. When they had heard these words, uh -huh. they marveled and left him. Uh -huh. and they went on their way. Yeah, they should just keep stepping. Go ahead. Matthew 17 and 24. Let's go to Matthew tw uh, 17. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10 and 1. Matthew 10 and 1. And when you get that, brother, go ahead and read Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, uh -huh. he gave them power against unclean spirits. Yes. To cast them out mm -hmm. and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Yes. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. Uh -huh. The first, Simon, mm -hmm. who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, mm -hmm. and John, his brother, Continue. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the publican, mm -hmm. James the son of Alphaeus, mm -hmm. and Levius, whose na surname was Thaddeus, mm -hmm. Simon the Canaanite, and Judas the Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Go ahead. These twelve sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. Enter ye not, mm -hmm. but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. And as ye, ye go, preach ye, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh -huh. Now later on in that chapter when he was going uh, through that, we read this because later on in Matthew 17, he was he, he told them, he told them something. He said that, uh, and I'll read this a little bit so we can move on. Uh, meet me over in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. But he's uh, but over in Matthew 17 and 25, he said, uh, he said, yes, and when he had come into the house, Jesus permitted him, saying, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute, or their own children, or of the strangers? And Peter said unto him, Of strangers, Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free. Now, 27. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast a hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money, that take and give unto them for me and thee. So he was saying, so even when he sent them out, so the whole point of that was even when he sent them out, he said, you know, pay tribute to where tribute is due. They're going to want money or they're going to want a tax. Pay the tax. That's what we have to understand there. Let's go over to Ephesians. Let's start wrapping this thing up here. Ephesians 4, and let's pick it up at verse 7. Ephesians 4 and verse 7. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. But to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Yes. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up into the high, yes. he led captivity captive uh -huh. and gave gifts unto the men. Yes. Now that he ascended, what is this? But he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Okay. That he descended the same also that ascended up, up for above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Yes. And he gave some apostles yes. and some prophets mm -hmm. and some evangelists yes. and some pastors and teachers mm -hmm. for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. Go ahead. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Yes. And one of the knowledge of the Son of God mm -hmm. unto perfect man. Yes. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Yes. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried out with every wind of doctrine. Yes. By the slay of men uh -huh. and cunning craftiness. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. All right. Do we got one more? Do we got time for one more scripture? Yes, sir. What's our time? Let's go to First Timothy three, and we'll, this will be the last spot we go to. No, let's, let's go to okay. Let's go to First Timothy three. First Timothy three, and we'll pick it up at verse one. We're going to go to First Timothy three and verse one. This is how we should be conducting ourselves. This is what the Lord is setting up for us. First Timothy three and verse one. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. This is true saying. Yes. If a man desire the office of a bishop, yes. he desire the good work. So he's getting, he set up the order in church. He set up the protocol in church. Go ahead. A bishop then must be blameless. Yep. The husband of one wife. One wife. Vigilant. Yes. Sober. Yes. And of good behavior. Given to hospitality. Apt to teach. Ready to teach. Go ahead. Not given to wine. Can't be an alcoholic. Can't be given to wine. Nor no striker. Can't be big on fighting. Can't be you, you. You can't be a brawler. Go ahead. Not greedy of filthy lucre. It can't do it for money. Go ahead. But patient. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. Not covetous. Go ahead. One that ruleth well in his own house. You gotta have your house in order. God is about order. That's why He brings it up. You gotta have your house in order. Go ahead. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Yes. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, uh -huh. how shall he take care of the church of God? You can't rule your own house. How can you take care of the church of God? Go ahead, brother. Not a novice. You can't come in this word for two weeks and then think you can just run the church and be in front of people. <laughs> Go ahead. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Okay. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. Yes. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Go ahead. Likewise, must the deacons be grave. Yes. Not double tongued. Mm -hmm. Not giving too much wine. Uh -huh. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Filthy lucre, just filthy money. You can't be. You can't do this for money. This is not about money. This is about spreading the word, giving the truth, and helping people guide them in salvation. Go ahead. Holding the mystery of the faith. In a pure conscience. Yes. You tell them the truth, and, and that's just it. And, and let the chips fall where they may. Go ahead. And let these also first be proved. Yes. Then let them use the office of the deacon. Uh-huh. Being found blameless. Go ahead. Even so must their wives be grave. Uh-huh. Not slanderers. Mm -hmm. Sober. Faith in all things. Mm -hmm. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. One wife. Ruling their children and their own household, houses as well. We got to do this thing work well, brothers and sisters. We got to do this right. You got to be serious about this. Go ahead. For they that have used the office of the deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree. Yes. And great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Yes. These things write I unto thee, mm -hmm. hoping to come unto thee shortly. So that was just Paul writing. He said, I hope to revisit you again pretty soon. Go ahead. But if I tarry long. That thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. What? So there's your order right there. He says, so if I'm waiting, if I take too long, okay? If I take too long, that thou may know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God. Finish that, brother. Which is the church of the living God. Which is the church of the living God. The pillar mm -hmm. and the ground of truth. That's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. That's what we have to understand. God has a protocol. He has an order for us. How do we conduct ourselves in society, in church, and in our homes? I hope this message and lesson has been edifying to you. Until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. <laughs>